Alright, so I'm just gonna give full disclosure. I'm recording at a slightly different time than I usually do, so if you hear my kids playing in their room, yeah, sorry about that. They're fine. My son can just be a little dramatic and he will sometimes, if they try to take something from him, he will scream and like scream scream. So don't mind that if you hear it. But anyway, let us just jump right in to today's video. We're going to talk about Catherine Full Body. So let's go into the story. So the story of the game is you are playing as Vincent and he is at the bar, you know, kind of having maybe some troubles with his girlfriend. They seem like they're kind of at different points of life. And once all his friends have left, in walks another girl also with the name Catherine, but hers is spelled with a C instead of a K because his girlfriend's name is spelled with, uh, is Catherine. And he doesn't really remember bringing her home or anything, but he wakes up with her in his bed. So now he has cheated and basically the whole game is just him going through the morals and figuring all of that out. So anyway, let us move on to the gameplay. So there's two different aspects of gameplay to this game, and I'm just going to talk about the simple one first of the story of if you're, you're just walking around and talking to your friends. So there are two ways that the story bits are presented, and some cutscenes are done drawn like literally like it's an anime, while others are the 3D animation, in-game model, whatever you want to call it. Anytime you were actually playing the game, you will always be playing, of course, in what the game model looks like. The anime drawn is just for some cutscenes, but... You know, that gameplay, pretty simple, works pretty well. You can use your phone because you'll sometimes get text. Uh, wander around the bar, you can talk to people at the bar or any of your buddies, go to the bathroom. The gameplay in the real world is very simple and you just have some choices you make. And now there is a meter that can show up at any time you are choosing dialogue and depending on what you choose, it will either lead Vincent's like subconscious to either good, bad, or maybe a little more neutral. And depending on which way you have him leaning more, like let's say you're having him lean to the bad side more, then there will be points in the game because it does really heavily affect the game and the story where he will just automatically be having thoughts and it will pop up and he'll automatically be choosing more of the bad side because he's leaning more into that. So yeah, this is a game where your choices definitely do affect the story and everything because even like no matter who you choose there is a good and like bad you could technically say ending with them or even a neutral one so it's not like oh picking one girl is considered necessarily the good ending there's a good bad neutral for all of them now as for what a lot of the actual gameplay is made up of it is made up of the puzzles now the puzzles, like the whole tower system of climbing these blocks and pulling them out, it is really fun. And when you get going, it's good. I do have an issue and I don't know if this is just maybe um, because I only of course have a PS4 copy and I have been playing it on a PS5. But I remember even when I was playing it before I had the issue on the PS4 but it feels like maybe it was a little worse on the PS5, like maybe the joystick was a little too sensitive, like even more sensitive because, and you'll see it in some of the gameplay where it sometimes looked like, what on earth are you doing? And that's because controlling Vincent in this, I don't know, maybe I just need to turn the sensitivity down or something, but it's very awkward to control him. Sometimes the slightest tap, like he'll go shooting off to wherever and he won't do what you're trying to get him to do like you want him to drop down on an edge and he'll climb up on something instead or he just like won't climb up or he'll climb like onto a block you didn't want him to climb like I don't know the controls definitely at least for me seem a little wonky when I'm trying to climb the tower 
again it, it could just be a me issue um but that is something to just keep in mind if you ever do play this game because in the cutscenes where you're just walking around the bar like everything controls fine and at the end of the maps when you're on the little like church area he controls fine so i don't know what it is with the puzzles but anyway to move on to other aspects of the puddles, puzzles, you of course have items and you're ranked on like how well you do and everything. And as you can see in some of the gameplay, if you play on easy mode, you are given an option to autoplay if, you know, you're just kind of stuck on something. I, for instance, will admit when I was recording this audio, because it's been a bit since I played the game a couple of years, um, I, for some reason, forgot that the dark gray blocks could be moved so I was stumped and I ended up using the autoplay and then he started moving them and I felt so stupid because I was like oh my goodness but yeah there will be the different block types as well um there's like trap ones where you can't hang down or you can't if you jump on them you have to jump down quickly there's ones you can't move there's ones it's a lot more difficult to move so you know you have to time it right to make sure you don't get killed by a boss or anything and you have your breakable ones that you can only go on them like two times and then they'll just completely break. But yeah, honestly, minus my one complaint about like the controls with Vincent, I love everything else about the puzzles. Like the character models look great. The anime style cutscene, like it all looks great too. The music, definitely some really good memorable music too. I honestly love it. But anyway, let us move on to my thoughts and opinions. So I definitely would say that at this point, because this game originally came out on the PS3, yeah, I think it was the PS3 and it was just called Catherine. At this point, I would say if you haven't played it and you don't have the original Catherine, definitely a lot more worth it to just get full body because it's basically the definitive edition at this point. You get everything you got from the previous game and then just the bonus stuff of Catherine with a Q. I don't know why a Q. Um, it... <laughs> They had to come up with some other Catherine and there wasn't any other, you know, letters. So, Quathrin, that's what we called her. But, so you just get that added bonus of having that. So at this point, it's really more worth it to just get full body. I honestly, this, this game definitely just goes nuts. It knows what it wants to be and doesn't really shy away from that. It's it's in my opinion at least, I haven't really seen much games like it. One of the more unique games out there that any company has made, not even just Atlas, but you know, Atlas, they mostly make, you know, the pretty kind of similar RPGs like Persona and the Shin Megami series are what they're most known for. But this one, and if I remember correctly, Catherine really only even came about because they were wanting to test like the way the models looked and everything for like cutscenes and walking around. They basically just wanted to test that engine and the models and everything for Persona 5. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I remember that being basically the reason why they made Catherine and why it's like so vastly different and out there from any of their other games. And they did put it under like, cause the opening, you know, little sequence, it's the Golden Playhouse Theater. So they kind of have it set up like you could argue this universe or whatever where they can really just throw in these balls to the walls crazy as hell games. And I really wish they would make another game, not like a sequel to Catherine or anything, but just some crazy let's just go nuts and do what we want and see where it takes this game. Because like I said, Catherine, you know, and it's interesting in the fact that your character isn't necessarily a good guy. Now, a lot of what I like about this game is there can be a lot of stuff that is maybe more led up to interpretation on how you feel. Like everything's, I mean, it's spelled out, but you know, the way all the characters act with you and like the meter I explained and everything, 
a lot of stuff you could say it's left up to the individual how they would feel. But honestly, like I said, this game, it, it just goes so crazy. And we're gonna hit into spoiler territory here. So if you haven't played this and you want to click away from this video for now, go play it and then come back. But I love the fact that when adding Catherine with a Q, they really, really went all crazy because, you know, you have your endings where you could kind of, it's like the good, the bad, you have a good with Catherine with a K and then the kind of like bad with Catherine with a K and then there's the same with Catherine with a C. Like it's, it's one of those games where I play it and pick the options that I want to pick and see where I get where it goes from there. But if you are wanting to get a particular ending, definitely look up a guide because the game is very particular in what answers need to be given and everything, and it doesn't really spell it out for you, which I like. It doesn't just really flat out tell you this is what you need to say to get this ending. It it makes it feel more, you know, kind of like a realistic conversation almost because there's not just this clear-cut guide as to this is exactly what you say to get the good versus the bad ending with Catherine, like with each Catherine. But anyway, so with the Catherine with the Q, if you romance her, him, it, he's a, no, okay, I, it is a, that's right. Catherine with a Q is a dude, um, cause he's an alien. Like you find that out if you romance him and the, Ending with him, if you do choose to romance him, I did not. I got the good ending, I think, yeah, because I had played the game before, like the original, so I knew which one I wanted. I went for the Catherine with a C happy ending. Personally, I think that's the happiest, the best. Everyone's truly happy. Um, but so the Catherine with a Q, we looked up because we were curious as to what the ending for Catherine with a Q was. And oh my goodness, it went fucking insane. So you're, you know, you choose Catherine with a Q and the other Catherines come to his apartment and start trying to brutally unalive him and Catherine with a Q, but just end up like brutally kind of unaliving each other if I remember correctly. But like it turns very like dark and grotesque almost like it turns into what you would think a horror anime would it comes out of nowhere and it goes hard so you know that's what i'm saying is like they just went all in with it because like yeah it was these people and then you know what we're gonna add a third option and we're gonna make it an alien because that's cool and then with that ending we're, we're basically just gonna make them go insane with anger because you chose like him over them so it's the oh how dare you now we're both just gonna unalive you like it really is not at all shy about going crazy with it and honestly it's kind of nice too sometimes to it's nice in a way to see like older adults and you could argue having like just everyday issues. Of course there's plenty of like supernatural aspect because Catherine with the C is a succubus and you have the nightmare sequences where if you die in the nightmare you die in real life and everything but it's nice to see more adult real world topics coming in like you know they have this idea of cheating and like he should tell his girlfriend because she's at the stage where she thought she was pregnant and then there was some speculation of characters in game and even like my husband even kind of thought maybe of like did she kind of lie and did she you know was she trying to kind of trap him a little because at, she kind of does seem like she maybe knew after a bit that she wasn't pregnant but you know you have that and then like should he get married or does it seem like maybe he's not happy with her and should leave her for Catherine or just go on his own route like bringing in like those real world issues of like your relationship like do you if you feel like you're not happy in it it's like should you you know because you were happy in the beginning should you still try to make it work out or you know is he just gonna call it quits and everything it brings those adult issues into a video game. And honestly, 
it's not too difficult a game if you really want to you know just like just like any other game if you really just want to get the story and you're not very good at puzzles anyway the puzzles on easy are really easy like i even me I did not have any trouble getting through them so I was able to get to the story bits but the thing is too this game also has it's got a lot of replay value because you want to see the little different cutscenes you want to see what happens if you you know choose the different girls like uh you know continue spoiler I chose Catherine with the C the good ending and the reason you know we even think that that is like the best ending is it ends he and Catherine they're married, you see them at their wedding at the end of the game, Catherine with a K, she's with somebody else and like, you know, are doing their thing. And then he looks just genuinely happy with her and they end up like having three kids or something it's shown. Like, they just seem so happy. Whereas Catherine with a K, yeah, their wedding, I don't know, they just kind of don't seem like they're really into it. But there's, there's that aspect of just getting those different endings and then even the fact of trying to figure out how can you save the other people because certain NPCs you can save if you like talk to them and interact with them and everything you can save them from dying they don't always have to die and then they'll come in the game and you know you meet them in real life and it's the whole kind of like you you know they know they're they know they know each other from somewhere and then they find out like it's cool to see who you can save and like maybe even try to figure it out. Of course, you can just look up a guide and make it easy, but it's always fun to do, do it that way too. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave in the comments below maybe which Catherine you like best, which one ending you got, and but if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. You don't have to, but it helps let me know what you all enjoy watching. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I upload every Friday my Twitch Discord, Instagram, Twitter, second channel, which I do plan on getting more active on. I'll link down below Twitch. I stream Tuesday through Friday starting at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye!